All right, but here's where the good work happens. So let's talk. We need to narrow down into a gap. We need to look at the procedural side and the conceptual side. So what can we say from all of this, knowing the tasks that we've already looked at, it's in front of you. If you want to look at your item analysis, it is on page um, eight. Thank you. Um, your item analysis that we've already looked at when we looked at our data is on page eight. And knowing our standard percentages, which was our powerful page on six, mm -hmm. um, what would you say is the largest gap on our no side, where we feel our students really need to close that gap to show mastery? Independent and dependent clauses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Once they understand that, then they will understand finance types, and they will understand what a run-on is, and they'll understand what a fragment and comment, how to use a comma. So I think that it starts there, okay. and everything else will fall into place once they get that grasp mm -hmm. of understanding. Because we're going to possibly, would you all say it's safe to say that we could positively assume that in seventh grade they know types of sentences? that they know the types. They may not be able to say, oh, that is a, mm -hmm. but we know that they know how to write them and they may not quite understand or remember yet, but we know that this is probably something we could quickly hit and do now and review and move on, right? It's not gonna really close that gap. Um, but all of the comma rules and then how to close those fragments and close those run-ons and make sure that a verb agrees, it all starts with the independent, independent. dependent. Okay, I like that thinking. What about the show? There's kind of two here. So, I would this say, is a procedural. Yeah, I would say the big thing here would be when to add commas, mm -hmm. because the commas would then break up a run on or even punctuation too with that. It would also indicate whether or not something is a fragment, because a fragment usually has a comma or something that comes after it, mm -hmm. which would relate to students miss typing it as being a dependent clause. So mm -hmm. it would have to be comma rules. So Pam, if I was to say in your seventh grade class, with your baby sitting in front of you, <laughs> do you think they could show you where to put a comma more than they could show you and to tell you what's an e dependent and dependent clause? Or which one do you think they could show you probably today better than the other one? They could probably show me where to put the comma mm -hmm. and not, they will not be able to identify the independent and dependent clause. They would struggle with that. Because we know with our strong let population we have mm -hmm. that with our large ESL um, classes that she teaches them about the pause, the natural breath mm -hmm. is how they decide. Right. And so I do think that a comma by just reviewing, not the rules of it, but mm -hmm. the art of a comma is a breath. I think we can get them to kind of understand mm -hmm. the comma, just like over here types of sentences, right? It could exactly. be something we could quickly go, maybe put into a do now or, and, and move to. But do you agree, Pam, that your kiddos, this would be what they probably know the least amount on this list? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yvonne, what about you? I totally agree. I, I feel like that since they already have that awareness of where does um, a breath naturally come in a sentence, mm -hmm. then they already know when they're reading it. Oh, mm -hmm. there needs to go. A com they need to put a comma there.